this video today is about the differences between metals and non-metals. It's going to be super short, so let's get cracking. The first thing to think about whenever you get asked a question on metals and non-metals is make sure that you've got an example in your mind. So the ones that we're going to come back to today are for the metals, we're going to use copper, and for the non-metals, we're going to look at carbon or charcoal, the stuff you put on a barbecue. So those two I want you to keep in your mind today as examples of each. These are the properties of metals that you should have a rough idea about and be able to draw comparisons between them. So the first one at the top here is their state at room temperature. So that means are they solids, liquids or gases normally at room temperature. Metals, hopefully through common sense, you know are normally solids at room temperature, except mercury. So thinking about all the examples that we have, the vast majority of metals that you know in your day-to-day -day life are solids. Non-metals are kind of a little bit more difficult. Some are solid, like the carbon I have here. Some are gases, like oxygen or hydrogen. Um, and some, bromine, just the one, is a liquid. Um, so you can't really tell the difference between a metal and a non-metal just using its state. Which one's stronger, a metal or a non-metal? Metals are way stronger than non-metals. If I look at the carbon here, you can see it breaks down really, really easily. This happens with all non-metals. Metals, by comparison, way stronger, used for bridges and buildings and things like that. Their appearance is very different. My copper, as you can see here, is super shiny, whereas my carbon is what we call dull, which means it doesn't really have any luster or shine to it. Density means how heavy is it for its size. So the metals are super heavy for their size, whereas the non-metals are actually quite light for their size. Metals are heavy based on how much you have of the substance. Malleable means how easily it bends. So you can see the copper here bends way easier, whereas the carbon, if I try and break that up, it doesn't bend, instead it breaks, which is what's causing it to go onto the table. So metals are normally malleable. That's why they can be used in wires and things that bend. Um, and non-metals are completely non-malleable. Conducting of heat, metals are very good at conducting heat and conducting heat away from your bum if you sit on a metal bench, um, whereas uh, non-metals are not very good at conducting heat at all. The same thing applies to electricity. Metals, great at conducting electricity. Non-metals pretty much can't conduct electricity, unless you're talking about graphite, which is a special example because of its delocalized electrons. Magnetic properties? You might think that all metals are magnetic, but that's not true. Only three metals are magnetic, iron, nickel, and cobalt. You don't need to know that, but you should know that there's some metals that are magnetic. Non-metals are never magnetic. Sound when hit, we call this, is it sonorous or not? So does it make a nice ringing sound when you hit it? Now, metals we use in a lot of musical instruments, uh, like trumpets and trombones, um, and from that we use the property of metals that is that they are sonorous. Sonorous meaning they make the ringing sound when they're hit. Uh, Non-metals don't make this sound. If I hit my piece of carbon, I'm definitely not getting any ringing sound out of it. For most of that table, you shouldn't need to memorise it. It should be common sense from your observations of the world around you. Um, you may need to pick out a few of the key words that are new to you um, and just make notes on the ones that are completely new to you from this video.